I believe we are created for greatness, not mediocrity. That we are to live our lives accordingly, striving to be agents of change as we attempt to leave this world a better place than we found. Hey there guys, welcome, this is Manny the Man Lopez, and this is PLS Tips with Manny. Each uh, time I do one of these new episodes, I'm giving you guys new tips, new strategies on really how to position yourself as experts in your industry. My focus is really to help you guys generate more leads, more sales, and more referrals in your business. That could be with the power lead system, that could be with your own affiliate program, that could be with your own franchise business or your own home-based business, whatever type of business you have. I've given you guys tips on how to do uh, marketing strategies on social media, networking events, face-to-face, uh, -face, over the phone, through text. You've got a lot of great content to share. In this episode, I'm going to be giving you guys an update to my story. A little over a year ago, I did a, um, a PLS tips where I, I gave you guys my life stories, really to show you guys who I am and how I got to this position I'm at today of helping business professionals brand themselves and just become better at what they do and utilizing new technology to do it and um, there's been an update to my story Christmas Eve uh, just a couple days ago right now it's the 29th just a few days ago I got a letter in the mail from uh, the hospital that has my birth record so just a quick backstory I was orphaned at 18 months I haven't seen my mom since I was one years old I've been searching for her for over a decade now and all I've had to go by is her last name her last name was Dowdy um, so that's all I knew about my mom. I didn't know her first name. I didn't know where she lived. I didn't know where she's from. I didn't even know my dad's first or last name. Um, I was doing a, a post on Facebook the other day, and it was a, um, a thing I post at least a couple times a year. I go out there and I ask if somebody can help me find my birth mother. I give all my information, you know, what I was, where I was born, what my name was. You know, my name, birth name was Manuel Lucas Seha, um, which is a story behind all of that now as well. And this year, something actually happened. Uh, someone that I'm connected with just recently has a connection with the hospital that has my birth records. She got me in touch with a person I need to get a hold of. Uh, after five years of trying to get a hold of these people that, that you can never get a hold of them, I got the direct line of the person, first and last name the person I need to talk to is just awesome. So I got a hold of that person. They sent me my birth records. I had to fill out a form that I've been trying to get for a while now and got my birth records on Christmas Eve. Like I said, I've only known the last name of my birth mother. And uh, that birth record had my mom's first and last name, her middle name, uh, her birthday, her social security number, my dad's name. I mean, everything was outlined. And the awesome thing is that within 10 minutes of finding that information, I took it to Facebook and was able to find my birth mother, okay? I haven't seen my birth mother since I was one years old. Years old. One year old. It's a very surreal experience. Um, I found out she lives in Washington. Her name is Teresa. Um, she's been looking for me probably just as long as I've been looking for her. Um, the story I've been told was very similar to what really happened, according to her. Uh, I talked to her over the phone. Um, I found out I have a brother. Uh, I've known I had a brother, I just didn't know how old he was, what he looked like, what his name was or anything. Because um, they had called us when we were adopted. I was adopted and returned seven different times. Uh, and that's how she lost me because uh, she only was able to keep up to date to the first adoption. Where my last name had changed to Munoz. And the person I thought was my foster care uh, was actually someone who has adopted me. Um, so it's a crazy, crazy story, man. But I want to guys give you an update to that so you can really understand who I am and uh, what my real story is now. I found out so much about me. And it's been crazy because I've just, I hadn't known. I didn't know what I was. I didn't know my background. I didn't know uh, what uh, my family situation was, my living situation. I was told, you know, basically there's a police report out there that says that I was found, um, me and my sister, that now I, I got thinking it was my half sister. It's my real sister. Me and we both have the same dad, which is pretty cool. Uh, but we were found in a car with a bunch of you know stuff, and it looked like we were living in the car. And uh, I was uh, shirtless, basically just in a diaper in the middle of winter. It's freezing cold outside, and I was in a soaked diaper. It just looked like I had been neglected. And so I got a hold of my birth mother, 
she lives in Washington now. She's from Lake Elsinore, where I'm from. That's how I found her. The only Teresa Dowdy that was from Lake Elsinore. I'm like, this has to be her. And I went and, uh, and contacted her and saw that she's got my nose. So I was like, oh, man, that's my nose. Uh, that's where I got it from. So, um, yeah, so I had so many questions. You know, what happened? How did I end up, you know, adopted and, and taken away? And uh, the story I've been told was I was living in a car and we were turned in by Child Protective Services because we were homeless. And uh, it's a little different, I guess. So according to my birth mother, I was not homeless. I was in the process of moving out. She was um, leaving an abusive relationship from my father at the time. And they were married. I, I thought, I didn't even know that they had a relationship or anything. I didn't really know anything. So <laughs> I just kind of assumed and listened to what I was told. So um, they were married. They had a fallen out shortly after I was born. Um, she was in the process of moving out. She had dropped me off with uh, her brother and her sister. And she had to go take care of, you know, getting everything moved out of the house. Um, they had, you know, my uncle and aunt had left me. Uh, I don't know. I guess we were left in a car or something, but we are basically neglected from them. Police were called. We were taken away. I had no idea what happened after that. According to her, she said that we had uh, she had contacted an attorney, fought to to keep us, got temporary custody of us. My dad went to the court and said she's an unfit mother. Um, ended up being you know her mom, her family basically is all in Washington. I, I'm in California, so they're all in Washington, and um, she was saying that. Basically, she tried to take us to Washington to her family. There was a, you know, a, a, an order from the court that said that we couldn't leave California. So she tried to leave. They put out a warrant. Um, when we were caught, they basically took us away permanently and said, you know, this this is not a living situation to be living in. So I was then adopted uh, and returned a boatload of times, just like you know, I'd imagine, I'd imagine, uh, or was told. And um, she lost me after my first adoption. We got adopted again, changed the name, you know, adopted again, changed the name. And it's just, you know, it was a back and forth battle. I was, I was just a bad kid, you know. I didn't, didn't grow up pretty, uh, pretty well disciplined or nurtured, really. So just a crazy, crazy story. But, um, yeah, so found out she was been looking for me for all this time, and she's been looking for Manuel Lucas Munoz <laughs> and not uh, Manny Lopez. So, you know, it's hard to find. And I uh, talked to my brother. His name is Jonathan. He's 26. Um, seems like a pretty cool dude, and I'm excited to, to see where this venture goes. Um, so I had a pretty, pretty unique Christmas Eve and Christmas, you know, catching up with a family I've never known. And uh, found out that my heritage, uh, I've always said that I was Puerto Rican to everybody when, when I would go and, and talk about, oh, what are you? I'm like, I don't know, I'm probably Puerto Rican or something, I don't know. But I found out that I'm Mexican, I am Native American, Blackfoot Indian, and, uh, and Irish, which is pretty cool. Because uh, one of my favorite people right now out there is uh, Conor McGregor, he's an MMA fighter for the UFC. And a big Irish heritage guy, and now that I'm part Irish, I can I can celebrate with him. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, other than that, you know, my story hasn't really changed much from there. You know, I was um, I grew up with my adoptive family that I was with since about four, and uh, always had an entrepreneurial spirit. You know, I'd, I'd always want to sell stuff and, and start a business, or or not only start a business, but you know, take what I had and and make money with it. You know. Uh, very, very uh, motivated to to do something with with what I had. Um, I knew I wasn't meant just to pay bills and die and, and just live a, a very boring life. You know, I know that I was out here to do something special, something different. So that's what I did. You know, I came out of uh, of high school and I joined the Navy for a little bit. Um, that's going to be a, an interesting story. I haven't really told anyone that full story of what happened besides my very close circle so that's going to be saved for the book that I'm writing called From Orphan to CEO and um, it's an interesting read it, it was a very short-lived um, Navy experience that I had but it taught me a lot I graduated boot camp 
I had gotten stuck in, in Chicago for a while and just everything went spiraling downhill from there. But um, there, there's a story there. After that, I came back home. You know, I had my girlfriend at the time, which is now my wife of over 10 years. And, you know, she was the only one that really stuck there. She was the only one that was, I was getting letters from almost every day. And, you know, she was there by my side when everyone else wasn't there, but everyone else left. And, you know, it's it hard, you know, when you're growing up and you want a family and you don't get that, you know, and you, it's, it's difficult. But, you know, there's people there that were there in and out. And um, there was people there that really tried their hardest to be there. And circumstances just wouldn't let them at some point. Um, I'll kind of give you guys a quick background of why I went searching for my birth mother. I haven't talked to my adopted mom in, in almost five years now. And it was right before I started my company. Um, I started my company in 2011. And right before then, everything had crashed. I had got my cars repossessed. I was evicted from my house. You know, I, I really put all my eggs in one basket and, and I failed miserably. And uh, I left a very comfortable income. I was making, you know, close to six figures with this company. I, I easily would have broke six figures that year if I stayed with them. And my wife at the time was six months pregnant. Um, and I said, you know what, I'm going to build my own dream. I, I'm tired of building these guys up and, and making all this, this, these sales and income. And, and I'm not getting what I deserve. Not, I mean, monetarily, it was fine, but the respect and and where I wanted to go I wanted to lead a team I wanted to go out there and duplicate myself and show the skills that I had and be able to show them and give them to other people so they can better themselves for some reason I just really like to see other people succeed and they just wouldn't give me that chance it's, no 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 you should stay as a sales guy I was the number one on the board I was number one for 10 months in a row and and uh, when they they screwed me over at that place I was just I just gave up I was just like there's no there's no benefit in, in in living this this life that has no purpose. I'm going in there early. I'm leaving late to build someone else's dream. To have you know the CEO drive four different Lamborghinis, but you know can't uh, can't afford to put me in a manager position that every day would tell us this is how you do it, this is where you do it, this is how you do it. And I followed it to a T, and it went to the guy who hung out with him on the weekends instead of you know the guy who was a family guy and really just put all his effort into it. But hey, you know, you live and you learn. Everything happens for a reason. I always, always know that. I wasn't meant to be there. So I left. And when I left, I made some wrong partnerships with people that I thought were legitimate and thought could take me to where I need to be. And fortunately, they're just money hungry. And money hungry people is just not the type of people you need to put in your circle. They just, they just don't see it. They don't see the value of, of, of creating a legacy or creating something of value of meaning they just want to make that extra money they just want to make that quick buck so you know I, I crash and burn and you know I was basically homeless at that time I didn't have a place to go to and I just got evicted from a place who's gonna to rent to a guy who just got evicted right it was me my wife at the time and my uh, my two boys well one was in in the belly <laughs> um, and so I contacted my adopted mom and say hey you know I'm, I'm out of my luck right now I, I need some help can you you know you've got an extra room can can I stay there for a little while why I get myself back on my feet she says, yeah yeah no problem no problem you know you think you know mom would be more than happy to have you right I get there and it was just different you know always snapping at each other you know my wife felt so uncomfortable being there my kids didn't feel like grandkids they felt like renters <laughs> and um, out of nowhere a couple months into it you know while I was building myself back up I got a knock on the door saying your mom wants you out in a week no explanation just go and I had nothing at the time it was barely making over minimum wage and trying to save up and having my bills that I had to pay for and it was just it's just not it wasn't good you know, and I went to go talk to her and said, hey, you know, James came and knocked on my door, said I got to leave. That's her brother, James. And um, she didn't want to do it herself. And she, what do you say? Uh, want you out. Said, okay. Any reason why? I mean, that 
I still need some time to build up some funds so I can save up. I have to pay a lot, a deposit just to get a house. I mean, I live in California, so you can see how expensive it is out here. It's not easy to turn save up some money living off of 10 bucks an hour, right? And so I ended up having to leave there. It was a very bad falling out, and I, I still to this day don't know why. And um, I've given her an open door to say, hey, you want to be back in my life? And pick up the phone and call me. You know, give me a reason why I was kicked out on the street with my family. And she wouldn't give me a reason. She didn't call. It's been five years. I have yet to receive one phone call. So, you know, that really got me thinking, you know, I don't have a mom. And I keep seeing it. All these times people talk about all oh, the moms are greatest. Mom's always there. Mom's always going to be the one that fights for you and and cares for you and all this stuff. And I didn't have that, so I was like, you know, if I don't have that from her, and I haven't had it for years, you know, when I lived, I ended up moving with my dad around 13 uh, when I used to live with her, and from there I basically got disowned. So I wanted to see, well, where's my birth mom? Where's what person who gave birth to me? You know, maybe she has some type of feeling of love or wanting or need or, you know I had so many questions who am I why did I get adopted or get orphaned you know what happened in my story I just have what's been told to me for years and it was just so many unanswered questions so five years ago I really started to really focus on the search and, and try to find her and um, just five days ago five days ago I found her 28 years old 27 years later we're reunited. <laughs> she lives in Washington, so it's a little ways from where I'm at. I'm gonna have to make a trip up to Washington next year and see if you know really make a, a family reunion. But um, found out all this time she's been missing me, and she's you know texting me every morning, calling me, "Good morning, son. Love you. Da da da. Miss you. Sorry." So it's it's pretty cool to have somebody to call a mom now, and um, it's exciting. You know, it's it's a new venture. It's a new a new path to go down towards and to see what happens you know I, I don't want to keep my hopes up too much you know you just never know what people are who they are why they are the way they are I, I just don't know yet it's all in the beginning stage but I'm excited to see where it turns out and you know we'll see where it goes um, from there you know I started my business when I left my mom um, my adopted mom I, I started my own business and just thought, well, you know, I, I've got to go out and do it on my own. You know, I just, I can't just go in there and just keep building somebody else's paycheck. And I got to live my own dream. So I started my company within the first six months. Um, we did over $100,000 in sales. It was great. A big learning curve, big learning experience, you know, get too big too fast. Um, I just wasn't ready for that type of, uh, of new intake of clientele. We had a product that was awesome that worked that did very very well and uh, and it took off like a wildfire you know by 2013 I was named one of the best by Facebook when they hit a million advertisers and you know that kind of publicity got us kind of skyrocketed out there even more and it's just a you know a big uh, big learning big learning curve of, of what you can do what you shouldn't do what kind of people you should be surrounded with, what kind of delegation you should be giving out to people, what kind of information you should be giving out to people about what you do and your process and everything. Because I had so many people that came to me as you know new affiliates or, or people that want to join my team just to come find out three months later they're stealing all my ideas and starting something that competes with me. So you know it's, it's a big learning curve in business. So you got to learn about you know keeping customers happy. The basic basic thing in any business is customer service is always go out and overperform on anything that you you promise to your clients because when you do that you're gonna have loyal clients and loyal clients refer you business and I've seen just in the last two years just the real real difference of focusing on new business versus focusing on nurturing old business you nurture old business that new business is gonna duplicate itself so it's it's very very big on that end um, I've been able to go out there and, and really take an industry and learn from it and fill in the gaps is what's needed. You got to fill a need if you're going to start a business. If you're going out there and you're doing an affiliate program, find the people that fill that need for you or find the people that uh, would help you 
and you helping them to fill that need. So there's always a customer out there for whatever business you're in, but you got to go out there and you just got to make it happen. You find something that you love to do. Find something that you would do even if you didn't get paid for it and find a way to make that into a business. The easiest way is get a system online. When you have a system online that enables you to duplicate yourself, whether that be through a power lead system sales funnel, whether it be through a website, whether it be through a mobile app, whether it be through social media, a way for you to present your product or service in a professional, nicely branded way. This way, if somebody was to find you online, somebody was to be referred to you, somebody was to come to you or you go to them, you have a way to say, check this out. And it could answer 90% of the questions of what it is that you do. So this way you can filter out the people because the time is the most precious thing that we have. And I've got tons and tons of these. Where's my thing? I'll show you this. This right here is just this year alone. Okay, I do a lot of expos and networking events. And I go out there and I meet people. And I love to meet people because, I mean, just look at all of these. These are like back to back. Just tons and tons of business cards of people that are interested in what I do. I can't even contact all of these people. I have not even contacted all these people. I tried. I mean, look at that. That's crazy. There's 10 on each page. Some of them are even back to back. So it's like 20 on each page. And there's a boatload of them. If you have a system of automation, like the Power Lead system, you can put all of these business cards in the contact manager. You can send email broadcasts to everybody at the same time. I've got like 11,000 plus leads in my contact manager. And there would be no way for me to call them up individually, every single one, and say, hey, are you interested in my services? Hey, are you interested in my services? It would just take an entire year. And that would negate you from getting any new contacts. And every week, I've got new people to talk. i got new people to talk to. i got new people to call, new people to email. So when you have a system of automation, and you can funnel those people into that system, you're going to have an ability to spit out the people that are really, really interested. So you can focus your time and effort on those people and not have to focus it on everybody and really just throwing everything to the wall and seeing what six. Time is the most precious asset you're gonna have. And if you can learn how to leverage your time with being able to contact your prospects, now you have the ability to really get out to a lot more people. You can use services like a text blasting service, email blast service, like what I was just talking about uh, last week, in, or yeah, last week in, in the PLS tips, the um, the Google Voice system. Um, there's another one called Mighty Text. That's another great one that you could use. There's a free version, there's a $5 a month version, and it's, it's a pretty unique platform that lets you just blast out to a bunch of people at the same time, instead of having to go out and do everything individually one by one. So there's just a lot of ways that you can go out there and, and utilize technology to simplify your business. Because once you get to this level of contact, now keep in mind, this is only face-to-face -face people that literally gave me their business, business card. Sorry about that. You know, that's not even counting all the leads that I generate online. So that's just this year alone. That's from, what, February to now, 10 months. So... You know, there's there's a lot of ways that you can go out there and you can generate leads. You can go to networking events and expos. You can do solo ads. You can go and purchase leads from lead vendors. Um, you can go out there and you can just, um, you know, guerrilla market. Go out there and meet people at the grocery store. I mean, you can do drop cards like Frank Caballeri goes and has these little $100 cards that have his website and everything on it. He just puts them everywhere. He goes out to the gas station, puts them in the gas thing. He goes out to the grocery store, leaves them by the cash register, just throws them on the floor. It looks like a $100 bill. Who's not going to pick it up, right? So there's so many different ways to generate leads and getting people to see what you have as value. And once you do that, I mean, you know, you, you've got a system in place. Now you have the ability to duplicate yourself. And when you duplicate yourself, you can reach a massive amount of people. And that's the key to success right now is, is growing your network of influence, providing value to that network so it's more than just, you know, here's a way for you to do business with me and me to get paid. No, I really started out, that's why I do these PLS tips. I go out there and I just give out this content, give out this, this value and just share who I am, what I do and how I do it. And it comes back to me tenfold because I have so many people I can just, oh yeah, you need help on email marketing. Oh, let me shoot you this video. 
oh, you need help on this? Oh, great, I'll show you this. This saves me so much time in having to do all these one-on-ones where I'd have to spend an hour with that person. When I started my business in 2011, and you know when we did $100,000 in six months, I had 100 new clients the first month, and I had no system of training. I had nothing. I was thinking, I was thinking okay, well, I'll just pick up the phone, and, and I'll just train these people. And I was spending the entire month just doing one-on-ones, training people that should already have a system in place, just repeating the same thing over and over again. And then I took my business back, what, I think 2013, I took it home and I said, you know what, I'm just going to focus on training. I'm going to focus on just giving as much content I can put through videos and ebooks and audiobooks where if somebody is interested or if somebody has a question about something that I've already answered before, I just shoot them a link. I say, hey, watch this video. Let me know when you're done. I can answer any questions you've got. And if they're really serious about being a legitimate person in your network, they're going to watch that video. They're going to read that ebook. They're going to listen to that audio series. And then if the persons that don't, the ones that aren't going to see any value in what you have to offer, they're not going to read it. They're not going to listen to it. They're not going to watch it. And now you know, don't spend time with that person. Don't waste your, If they're not going to invest the time in you, why should you invest the time in them? Right? That's a good test for me. As I always say, I give them something simple to do. Watch a short five-minute video. Watch a short 10-minute video. Let me know if you have any questions. This is going to answer 90% of the questions that you have about what, you, what you're looking to do right now. And then once you're done, hit me back up. Let me know when you're done, and I'll answer any questions you have. This way, it's systematic, it's professional, it's branded, and it's duplicated. And bam, you're going to hit success. So um, I think it's a little bit run off of what we had uh, last time. I'm not sure how much I covered in the last video. It was about 45 minutes long, I believe. But uh, this is a great update. I think it's going to be something that's going to be exciting for me 2016. I've got some big goals. Um, you know, I'm looking to more than double what I did this year. And it's going to be a, a very systematic approach to do it. And, you know, if this is the last PLS tips of the year, a couple more days, and we're going to do that 2016. So what I would suggest to you is go out there and find a system, find a strategy that is going to give you what you need to do in your business. If you're not doing what you love, if you're watching this video right now and you don't do what you love, you're not promoting a business that you could do in your sleep, regardless if you got paid or not with it, don't do it. Find something else. Find something you love to do. Look at what, if you were, if you had no bills right now, what would you be doing? If you had no problems to worry about, no stresses, what would you be doing? What would you be doing with your day? And if that's something, is something that you can teach others to do, you've got a business. The power lead system, you make a sales funnel with it. You got a business. Charge a consulting fee, you got a business. Somebody will pay you to learn what you love to do. Think about that. Many people will pay you. There's 7 billion people in this world. I love to create. You know, in high school, I was telling everyone I wanted to be a special effects coordinator or something like that. Designer. Special effects designer, right? Because I, I read this book, Ender's Game, and I, I love this book so much. I was like, this has to be a movie. i got to make this into a movie. I could do the special effects. I already had the vision in my head and everything. And then, you know, it went and made, got made, and it came out awesome. So I, I love that movie. But... That was my thing. I wanted to create. I wanted to wow people with design. And I get to do that now with my business. I build apps and I build sales funnels and I build commercials and I build logos and I help people you know, learn how to generate leads. I'm a really good at generating leads and I show people how to do it. This is how you do it, step by step. I just show them what I love to do and I get paid for it. <laughs> it's crazy. So find something you love to do. Become an expert at it. And teach others how to do it. There's so many people that would love to learn what you know. Just learn more of it. And you'll become more valuable. So I'm going to leave it at that. You guys have a very, very happy new year. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. I love to see you guys have success with what I do and what I teach. And you know, just very, very much appreciate all of my followers here that are following me and watching my trainings. And I really appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. really do. You guys are really awesome. So I hope to see you guys very soon.
Um, I've got some great events lined up for 2016. It's all about giving back for me. It's all about giving to foundations that I support. A friend of mine, one of his daughters, um, was one of the victims in the San Bernardino shooting just recently, that terrorist attack. And um, what our first event of the year, it's January 27th, we're going to be doing a give back program. Um, he started a foundation for it's called the Sierra Simone Sunshine Foundation for Excellence. They're going to be giving scholarships to people that are going to be following, you know, health and human services, mathematics, doctorate degrees, and people that just aren't in a position to be able to afford the college tuition. So we're going to be doing a big event that's going to be just giving 100% of our profits all to this this foundation. I'd love to be able to see if you guys can make it out there. So if anybody that's watching this video is in Southern California. Get in touch with me. My cell phone number is right below here. Shoot me a text and let me know if you want to get into this event. Um, you know, it's we're not here to make it a profit or anything like that or make any money. You know, it's it's going to be a pretty cool event. I'm hoping to have. Uh, I was just talking with the chef, private chef, uh, personal chef of Oprah today, and she may cater our event. So that'll be pretty awesome if she does. Um, we already have another event that, after that that she is going to be catering for. So I'm trying to get her for my 27th. And we'll see if they make that happen. So if you can, you guys are going to have some very, very tasty food. But uh, I will see you guys next year. And hope you guys have a great rest of your year. Be safe out there. Don't be drinking and driving on uh, you know, New Year's Eve. And you guys are awesome. And always remember that you are too blessed to be stressed. I'll see you next year. Bye-bye. I believe we are created for greatness, not mediocrity. That we are to live our lives accordingly, striving to be agents of change as we attempt to leave this world a better place in the family.